Welcome back to Western Washington University. I am still Aaron Clausen. I'm sorry. Good news is Sean Basler is still behind the camera and the project and all the editing and YouTube and my role is just here explaining the material. So today we're going to talk about assembly language and machine code. And if you've been following along, what we've been talking about is the data that we use, floats and structures, and we haven't talked about integers, but that should be in your textbook. And how this data actually gets represented in memory. What does the computer look for when we say 1.5? Today we're going to start talking about the operations we write, the code, not the data that we're operating on. What do these instructions look like to the hardware? So what does an addition look like to the machine? So let's start with a very simple little program. I'm going to start with a global variable that I'm going to call x. And since this is a global, this is going to live at a fixed location memory. And let's just say that it lives at 0x, 08, 04, AB, CD. And it's kind of a weird address. It's not really important, other than it's a fixed location, and I know where it's at. Someplace in code, like in our main routine, I'm going to take our variable x and I'm going to add 5 to it. x plus equals 5. And then I'm going to do some other things. Well, what does plus equal 5 look like in memory? Well, it turns out this operation for a variable that lives at that location is going to look like this. It's the number 8305CDAB04080 pretty obvious, right? Clearly, plus equals 5 is that number. Yeah. It doesn't look that way to me either. Well, this is what the hardware looks at. So when our Intel processor comes along and says, oh, look, 8305 CDAB 04085, that means add 5 to that location in memory. But that's not convenient for us to work with. So instead of looking at this machine code, what we use is an intermediate language that we call assembly. And I'm going to draw it right here in between. Need a little extra space. So we take this plus equals 5 and actually write down add. And this is where we have two schools of thought. There's the Intel assembly that Intel uses and Microsoft uses. And there's the AT&T assembly that Linux and basically the rest of the world uses to describe these operations. I'm going to use the AT&T assembly. If you're a Linux user, this is the assembly that you're going to see from all of the binary tools that you could use. So the way this would look in the AT&T assembly is I want the literal value 5, which we write with a dollar sign. The dollar sign says 5, not the thing at address 5. And then we give it the address. 0x, 08, 04, AB, CD. That address right there. This is the part to remember in this dialect of assembly. This dollar sign 5 is one of our sources. One of the pieces of data that we're giving. This plus equals 5 says take whatever was in x and add 5 to it and put it back into x, which is exactly what's going on here. We go to this location, 0804ABCD, grab the data that's in memory there, add 5 to it, and put it back into memory. So this value here is both a source and a destination. So we actually call this a two-address architecture because each one of our operations has two addresses, a source and a source destination. That's one of the things to keep in mind as we start learning about more types of operations here rather than just add, is it follows this pattern of source and a source last destination. So what happens if I had done subtract rather than add? Well, it's actually pretty easy in the C. There's subtract 5 from x. In the machine code, we just changed the 0, 5 
to 2D, obviously. That doesn't make sense to me, but that's what it's expecting. In the assembly, we simply change that to a subtract. And that's why we have assembly. It's a one-to-one -one mapping from the machine instructions to one of our assembly instructions. And the assembly instructions actually kind of tell us what's going on. This is a subtract. I don't know what 2D means in this context. Well, I do now. This is very clear. Not so clear. This is that mapping to actually what's going on in the hardware that gives us an idea of what's happening. So as we move forward in the next several videos, I'm going to start introducing more and more assembly. We're really not going to talk about the machine instructions anymore. This is what these operations look like in memory. And if you go look at the text section of your executable, you'll see bytes that look like this. This is what we're going to deal with, because this actually makes sense.